Um, what is an energy community? Well, I think there is not an energy community. Uh, the European Commission already starts with two different forms of energy communities. And it carefully says that uh, these two forms uh, should not exclude any other forms. Uh, in the Bridge Horizon uh, Task Force Energy Communities, uh, we identified 10 classes, and that is not, uh, not including everything yet. It is just a um, wrap up of what we found. The next question, uh, which problems should these energy communities solve? Um, according to me, it should be uh, the lack of grid capacity caused by the intermittent character of renewable energy generation, the electrification of transport and heating, and in particular, the mismatch between renewable energy generation and the increasing energy uh, renewable energy consumption, electricity consumption, I should say. This leads to the delay right now in the Netherlands, strongly already in the DNA of new renewable energy generation capacities. Even plans of 200 kilowatt are not, uh, are refused the connection to the grid in uh, Northwest Brabant because the grid capacity is not there. It also causes a delay in uh, connecting the new sustainable forms of transport and heating. There is a lack of capacity in the north east of the Netherlands for new um, supercharger uh, points. And that uh, is also causing, to, causing already excessive costs for grid improvement. Only in the Netherlands, this, com this is calculated to be somewhere between 50 and 100 billion euros to get the whole grid to the level that we can uh, accommodate a completely uh, renewable energy-based um, energy infrastructure. So we have a job. Um, and that job is, as I started, um, bringing together um, consumption and production and generation, balancing locally. Now, I would like to take uh, one energy community as an example, uh, and that is Schoonschip. And from the 10 classes that I uh, showed you shortly earlier, uh, identified by uh, the, the Bridge project, the Schoonschip is actually covering uh, 527. Uh, it collectively generates and trades electricity. It, um, it is a generation consumption community. Um, it is now in the process of becoming uh, a energy uh, neutral or energy positive district. And as such collectively um, collect has collected residential and industrial industrial self-consumption and is thus an energy positive district. That's the Atelier project, their sponsorship is part of. Uh, it is a cooperative financing and energy and, uh, efficiency cooperation. Um, it has collective services providers and it's a digital supply and demand response system. And I would like to go into this one because I think this project is uh, one of those projects which takes a lot of what an energy community could do uh, into, into account and, uh, and, and actually does that. Now, I hope that a movie will come up. Can you see it? Yes, yes, yes. Um, go down again. This is Schoonschip. There will be a shake later, but I can already tell you something about it. It is a community of 30 floating um, buildings containing 46 households. It has one grid connection. It has a private grid. 
It has 30 batteries. It has 46 heat pumps. It has an energy management system which coordinates all this. And it has per building, uh, no, actually per household. I should stop this. Are we back again? Yes. Great, it works. Uh, per household, it has enough solar energy to um, produce the uh, year-round consumption of the house. And this is what it looks like from a distance. This community, as I said, uh, no, this community started in 2008, so it took 12 years to get past all the legal, especially legal, and technical barriers. As I said, it's a community of 46 households. It has 46 private PV systems. Uh, these are separated uh, real estate projects, 30 batteries, one community-owned real estate object, one grid connection, which is one third of what the DSO would have connected if it had connected all the dwellings separately. It has a community-owned microgrid and a centralized energy management system. And it is working on uh, a blockchain, um, what do you call it, uh, rewarding system for the exchange of electricity. What does Schoonschip do? Uh, it does individual energy generation. It has an energy management system, which is um, uh, which does one second based metering to constantly balance uh, generation, storage, and demand. It has therefore collective self consumption. Uh, it is it will in the near time uh, include charging uh, electric vehicles and in the further future, vehicle to grid, using the uh, batteries of the, the vehicles as extra uh, storage capacity. And it is uh, aggregating the uh, both consumption and production to provide uh, flexibility and trade that on the different energy markets. And even to provide that to the local uh, DSO. The business model is such that the energy management system works on a maximum internal balancing of generation storage and consumption. This has led to a uh, connection of the whole area, which is one third of the standard connection capacity. Whereas 46 dwellings would have had to pay connection cost, it now pays one fee for the total connection, which is one third of what the total connection would have been, which is a cost reduction of about um, 50, 58%, a savings of 40,000 euros per year. This enables Schoonschip to build its own grid. And of course, the nice thing here is that it's, um, build on the water with um, jetties, where cables are probably easier to install than in the ground uh, in, an, in, in, an, in a neighborhood. Anyhow, the total cost of building the own grid and installing the energy management system uh, with a depreciation over the coming 15 years, and for the grid probably longer, um, plus 15 years of 40,000 euro reduction uh, paid off, pays off as it's going. Uh, the challenge was last winter and there was no capacity um, problem because the constant management of um, solar electricity, batteries and heat pumps was sufficient to keep the total required power over the connection under the 
one third of the normal limit. The next step is aggregation of generation storage and demand. And so that the community can actually start supplying the grid with um, either uh, energy or um, reduce the demand within the community. And as such, help the, uh, the, the DSO to avoid um, congestion in the script. Um, the, the party has one energy supplier and that energy supplier uh, takes care of the uh, balancing responsibility. So that's actually a service which is bought by the community. Uh, it has uh, agreed on a feed-in uh, price, uh, conform retail price. And what is under negotiation is that the community will even be paid by the supplier if they can provide uh, balancing services when the uh, quarterly balance for the provider is not matching. Furthermore, there are negotiations negotiations, as I said before, about uh, the mitigation of the congestion problems of the, the local DSO. And this is how this works a bit. What you see here is the Pro local production and the local consumption. Consumption is red and production is green. The dwellings flashing green are producing and flashing red are consuming. And there's only one connection to the grid, which only provides the excess or takes in the, uh, no, takes in the surplus of the community. Sorry, I just have a little, yeah. Because this is a continuing story, but I think I'll go back to the presentation. Now, what does Schoonschip need to do all this? And how is it provided with that legal freedom or legal uh, rights? To do the balancing, balancing act, you might call it, it needs to operate its local grid. It needs to share energy. It needs to manage the demand response, to dispatch the generation, manage the storage, supply to households, and supply to EV charging points. These are all rights that the community must have to do what it, what it does, as Schoonschip does. Well, under the Current Dutch law, operation of a local grid and sharing of energy to households, supplying to households and supplying to uh, electric vehicles is not allowed. Schoonschip managed to do this because it uh, was awarded uh, a grant under the regulation, regulatory sandbox. It's interesting to know that the regulatory sandbox came into force in 2014 and the Schoon Schip started in 2008. And if you go to the text of the sandbox, you'll find out that it was actually set up because a number of initiatives uh, was explicitly asking for it. Schoon Schip was one of those who explicitly asked for this kind of regulatory sandbox. It's called the Experimenten Regulation. And it gave them indeed the freedom and the rights they needed for a period of 15 years. The next step is for us, for all, uh, the uh, clean energy package. And you see that all what is needed by, uh, by needed to do what Schoonschip does is actually included. 
in the, the, the two directives. Now, we are look, if we look at the Dutch law, we see that most of them are adopted, except for the operation of a local grid, but all with remarks. And um, well, these remarks are maybe interesting to go about to go to go over. Um, the first one I'll come back to later, but the second one, which is allowed, but uh, sharing is not defined. And now it is the, uh, in, uh, looked at as mutual supply, which brings us to the next note for in this case, that you can only be a supplier as a community if you're a second supplier. And being a second supplier, you can only supply electricity to part of the installation. Management of storage, it is allowed, it is possible, but small storage in the Netherlands up to now is double charged by energy, energy tax. Because storing the electricity is seen as consumption. And when it goes out and is used by a dwelling, it is, or an end user, it is regarded as consumption again. Um, supply to, well, these, these are the same. The other ones are the trade on the um, ancillary markets. Uh, there is the note that you should have a large volume to participate. The nice thing is that uh, aggregation may solve that in a new law. So if we evaluate Schoon Schip against the, the current and the future legislation, we see that the business model for local balancing is feasible under the regulatory sandbox. The business model is potentially possible under the future Dutch energy law, uh, of which we have recently seen the concept and uh, commented on. But some legal issues have to be solved. The double tax on stor storage, the supply as a second supplier, uh, and having sharing defined as something else than mutual supply. There are nice, uh, we, we have good progress here, as we have now discussed a um, second supplier, which, well, I should say up to now, the first and the second supplier are divided by different meters. And we are now working on experiments with uh, separating the first and second supplier in time domain. So you might say that up to 10, 10 o'clock in the morning, you have supplier one. And from 10 till six in the evening, you have supplier two. And in the future, that may even be a variable time slot where maybe the owner of the house can switch from one supplier to the other. But this is not yet in the law and it's, an, it's a great fight. And I think we'll win it, but if in, in, in potential, the, uh, the possibilities are there in the Dutch law. Second point, uh, the pro prohibitions to own a local grid, uh, still here, but actually it's not that much of a problem because if there is uh, another way of looking at it, for example, if the grid operator decides not to provide a new area with a full grid <clears throat> or charge lower uh, connection grids, connection fees, the, the business model may be there. And that is uh, right now under negotiation. Um, one thing is that grid operators should consider purchase of electricity and power services, such as flexibility services to prevent reinforcement of the electricity grid. So if, they, if it's cheaper to buy flexibility from a community, they are forced to buy that flexibility instead of um, um, strengthening the grid. 
And the other one is that uh, there are negotiations about tariff, tariff, tariff differentiations, uh, allowing uh, limited use uh, to be charged lower. I know in France, something like that is happening. You have the low voltage, the medium voltage, and the high voltage um, fees. And if you manage to stay on the low voltage side, you don't have to pay for the medium and high voltage. Something like that will be happening here. And then it is very interesting for a community to, to take care of its own balancing. And last point is that, and I, I said so before, uh, the aggregation will enable uh, communities uh, some, sometimes more communities together to take part in the, in the different markets. And that brings me to the conclusion. Um, the exemplary Schoonschip business model for local balancing is feasible under the EU directives. The feasibility under the national law depends strongly on the quality of the transposition. The transposition should not be restricted to energy legislation alone. We have problems with tax law and uh, property law. We should be very careful that those problems are addressed as well. Actually, the, uh, the directives say that they don't say that the energy legislation should be adopted, but the legislation should be adopted in such a way that energy communities are feasible. And last but not least, the quality of the transposition is in details. So the advice that I would like to give to all those who are involved, even slightly, even on a distance in legislation, be very aware and um, very um, involved in what is written. Because as I said, we just found some small things that could make or break the effectiveness of the national legislation. Whereas the European legislation includes all the possibilities. If the transposition is not done properly, the blocks might be created in the, in the national legislation. Thank you. This was what I wanted to tell you. Maybe there are uh, questions. Yeah, thank you, Job. Uh, thank you for this uh, interesting example. Um, it, it's a bit, uh, you said that it took 12 years to get this uh, operating. I hope that in the next uh, replicant, it takes uh, much shorter now that the, let's say, EU legislation correct. is yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, we do have some questions in the, a uh, few questions in the chat, and I'll uh, read them out to you and then we'll uh, continue on. So, uh, for from Sonia, uh, our colleague from University of Mannheim, uh, we have a question on where is the electric, uh, wh what is generating the electricity? Is it PV or uh, where is the electricity coming from? And what is used for heating and cooling uh, in this area, in this energy community? Um, the, uh, the electricity is produced by solar systems. Each uh, house, each dwelling, uh, has a capacity of solar panels, which is equal to the annual consumption. The heating is done with uh, heat pumps with uh, considerable uh, storage uh, vessels, which enables uh, the, the heating to be provided either directly by the sun, or if that's insufficient, at uh, smart moments when the uh, capacity of the capacity of the connection of the community to the grid has enough space to uh, slowly charge all the uh, heating uh, storage vessels. And then the cooling is not necessary, or no? Okay. Um, well, well, I think we... I think a number of sorry a number of these how uh, dwellings have. Uh, heat pumps with a heating cooling combination. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then we have a question from Talia Brun from uh, a European Commission. She's asking uh, that she knows that this uh, specific energy community is involved in the Horizon 2020 project Energy to Peers. Uh, is there a plan to replicate this experience somewhere else? Um, 
there, there are, let's say the, the technology is provided by, um, for, the, for a large part by Spectral and Spectral is involved and I'm working with, together with Spectral uh, in a number of locations and several uh, situations in the Netherlands, not as um, complete as this one, but in The Hague, there is a community which is um, starting to share over the uh, public grid. And uh, they are making, they are doing negotiations with the grid operator on, uh, on, on fees already. There's one in Scheveningen. Uh, well, there are, there are more projects coming up, not going to the full extent as this one, especially because most are in uh, existing uh, areas and uh, you don't have the possibility to make a private or separated grid. But yes, the experience is taken to other places already. Okay, thank you. Among, and, through, uh, uh, sorry, uh, go ahead. Through uh, energy to peers amongst others. Mm -hmm. And then we have one last question and then we'll uh, have to move on to the other presentations. Uh, Bart, and I don't have the full name, is asking, uh, is the system also uh, varying energy prices depending on availability of supply? Uh, not yet, not within the community yet. It is one of the things that is uh, discussed between the community members. And uh, there is uh, an investigation in whether uh, the, the fluctuations in the grid can be used to store and um, uh, to feed back electricity into the grid. Okay. And that is in collaboration with the energy provider. Okay. 